Hey guys, welcome back. So this is just a continuation of the autumn art journal that I started in my previous video. We put it together there and got it going a little bit with some neutral pages and some stamps and stuff. And now I just wanna add some more color and some more collage. And the way that I kind of liken this is to building up a painting. So when we put the art journal together, we made our canvas and this is an opportunity to kind of go in and put in kind of like a ground to get everything going. So anybody who paints, you know, paintings are usually built up over time in little layers here and there. And so that's what I want to start doing is just putting some layers um, in different ways on different pages and just trying different things. This isn't about, again, making a finished spread or really thinking about anything. This is about just enjoying my supplies and gluing things and adding some color to these pages. So I'm gonna get my glue stick. I prefer this to most other methods for collaging in an art journal just because um, it's cheap, it dries fast, and you're not gonna have issues with bubbles. So this is just an all-purpose craft glue stick, so it's a little heavier duty than like your typical um, glue stick that you'd have in school. So not really thinking about this, just looking for places to put things, maybe pages that kind of don't have enough on them. And most of these are either neutral or they're in my color palette. One of my colors is yellow ochre. So I'm adding this to some of the pages and there that's stuck together. I like going through and adding some of these colors with collage paper. It just has a nice effect. Most of these are a little bit neutralized, so none of these have like super saturated color for the most part, and that's intentional too because when you're starting a painting, most of the times you're not really working with super saturated color. Um, things that are brighter come forward, right? And I think our eye intuitively knows that. So if I start with colors that are less showy, so they're a little bit more neutral, they're gonna tend to go back more and that's gonna give me more options for later with what I want to do with it. And so I like doing that first and then when I'm gonna finish up a page is maybe adding saturated color at that time. I like the opposite with the stripes here. That's fun. And this will be fun. And I like too when the um like the ripped edge of the paper comes over the edge because it just gives it more of a junky look. There's crumbles of tea stuck all over this from the last session I did when I made this because I put a tea bag directly on here and it does smell good. So that was a good idea. There's texture paste on here, so it just doesn't want to stick, but it will eventually smush that. And this stuff is great. If you can find paper like this anywhere, it has a really, 
absorbent feel to it and it's textured. So when you add fluid paints or watercolors to it, it'll soak in and the texture will show. Oh, I like that. Look, happy accident. So I am just gonna add some glue so this stays down and I'm gonna glue this down like that. a junk journal like this it's nice because it just makes it easy to sit down like sometimes I just want to come in and glue stuff or smear oil pastels or drip inks I don't always want to make something sometimes I just want that sensory experience of mushing my supplies this is a charcoal pencil and I can already tell in my last video, I put um, like different grounds and texture pastes on some of the pages and I have no idea what is where, but I can feel that one of those grounds is on here and it's picking up the, it's picking up the charcoal. Let's see. Scrunge it up. And a fun way to use hard pastels, if you have new pastels, these things are awesome. You can draw with them and you can also put pigment on. So if you don't already know pastels, whether they're soft or hard pastels like these, they're really just pigment in stick form. So they're just paint in a stick. So you can add water and do things like that to them. If you wanna make sure it's fixed like this, if you use some watery um, like matte medium, it'll dry with a bit of a layer over to it and seal it in. But I like it because it tends to give a watercolor texture um, without having to grab watercolors and it covers pages quite quickly and just gives this nice sort of dreamy background to it. showy for me so I'm gonna see if I can tone it down with some burnt sienna and maybe not sometimes you try things and they work out and sometimes they don't so I'm just gonna take some of this off there it's a lot more subtle And when you have um, like a white stenciled background on darker paper like this, this can be fun too because when you tone it, it's gonna make all those white areas turn to a different color. So I'm just trying to see what colors 
I might want to use. Some yellow ochre. And some orange. See, and I love that because even with the shape of this, it almost looks like a leaf. So I might come back in at some other point and maybe tear the other edge and then this whole little area will just be the shape of a leaf. And some kind of texture paste over here. I have no idea what it is. mush and this is canvas paper so I'm going to throw some paint on here just so you can see what it does in the art journal So I'm just mixing up what is basically like a Prussian blue. So I'm just using like a Mars black and a phthalo blue and you'll get something close to Prussian, but I want a dark color so that you can see how it'll pick up the canvas texture. And I just think this looks so cool in a book because it's completely unexpected. And it's funny too, because I actually don't like to paint on canvas very much for paintings, but I love it when it's this thin stuff and it's just ripped up and torn on a book. And I love this, like this immediately makes me want to start collaging an image and put other stuff on the page. Get Just wanna get some of the blue over there. Let me pull it off a little. spooky tree that I put, I think, rubbing alcohol on to distress it, but I don't want to cover the whole page. I have to... Ugh, this is hard because I don't want to ruin this image. I like it the way it is, but it's also... Maybe I'll do that. You know what? I don't want to rip it up, so I think I'm going to stick it on the inside cover. So then what I like to do, if you've seen my other videos, I like to vignette things like photos and put paint around them um, to give them a different shape. So sometimes I'll tear the edges of things, but tearing the edges of photos can be really tricky. And I also don't like fussy cutting. I like to change the shape of the image 
with the paint itself. And this also starts to integrate it onto the page by covering up some of the edges. But I don't want to cover up all the brown craft paper on here. So it's sort of a balancing act of keeping a little bit of what you like, but sometimes you also have to sacrifice a little bit to get the right effect. I think I love this. I don't actually want to do anything else to this, so I am going to leave it like that. Put a pencil in here. Trying to see if anything looks too pristine on any of these pages because I'm going to go in and throw some scribbles. Ah. And there's some ground on there and I don't know what it's going to do, so... And so if you don't already know, this is a Stabilo Woody, which is basically like a big chunky, water-soluble pencil. So, I'm gonna see what this does. And I get some dirty paint water on here, but that's fine, because it's gonna just pull in from other pages. And so you can see just from those few scribbles how much pigment is in that pencil. This is really all this black this is just from the pencil. So if you ever go look them up, they look a little bit pricey for a water soluble pencil set, but they're actually a really good value. They'll last you a long time. Um, I've never had to replace them yet. This is canvas paper, so I just want to see if I can pick up some of the texture. So if you don't know, if you want to lift up some paint, sometimes if you spray it with water, it doesn't always work, but sometimes spraying it makes it so that you can lift up more of the paint. And I can already tell this is going to be a really fun page to work on. It's already grungy. It's got some really dark darks in there. It's got some movement with the paste that's underneath and it's got some texture because it's the canvas paper too. So this is going to be a really fun spot to work on. These are all soaked. I'm just thinking what else I might want to add in here. I'm thinking some oil pastels. So usually the rule is you're not supposed to put acrylic paints over oil pastels, but honestly, you can get away with it in an art journal. It's really not gonna hurt anything. So I don't mind using it in early layers. Just checking, I have a pile of images that I pulled out that I might wanna start adding in. I really like this because it makes me think of how um, in New England in the fall and in the winter, you can see the night sky a lot better. And this makes me think of that as the sky gets really contrasted and all the stars start to come out. And crows, of course, we always have murders of crows in the yard in the fall. And we have some brown with some twinkly lights. 
more crows and bare trees, the woods. And the other thing I like to do is print out images on tissue paper. I don't know if I talked about this in the other video, but you can put a really light color paint underneath to get these to pop out, but they're just so nice the way they collage in. It gives a little bit of like a distressed look, which without having to go through the whole process of doing an image transfer. I do like the look of image transfers, but if you've ever done them before, it's really hit or miss um, sometimes on how the image comes out and it, I don't know, there's waiting involved too. So that's part of it. So I think, let's find somewhere this will fit. Oh, I could just wrap this over the edge. So I'm gonna put this here. But like I said, I need to put a light color underneath. So I'm gonna take some of this Prussian blue that I kind of mixed up and mix up a really light blue. So when I say light, I mean, you know, really almost white because I, even if it's closer to a mid-tone or what you think is light, it's going to reduce the contrast of your image. So you really want to think of just putting a tint underneath it. Sorry about that. There was a whole bunch of sirens, so I needed to stop filming for a second. But you want to make sure that you have a really light color underneath, like a tint because if you don't, your image isn't gonna show through because it's gonna make everything too dark because the tissue paper obviously is semi-transparent and usually if you can catch it fast enough, the paint will just act like a glue. I'll just do that, fold it over, bam, no big deal. that edge. Like I said, I just dry brush over some of the edges. It just integrates it onto the page because when you have all these really rigid straight lines, it looks to this or that is the only way you can explain it. It doesn't look like it's part of the same world as the pages. And so if you just dry brush over the edges, it just makes it part of the page. And I'll leave some of the straight pieces showing through because that's nice. It gives it a little bit of structure too, but yeah. And then this is good too. If you have extra paint on your brush, you can just wipe it on another page and it saves you from wasting paint and it adds harmony to your journal because you have the same color in multiple places. Doesn't this wanna... thinking of what else I might want to glue. I like this. I might put this here. This reminds me of cranberry bogs. I don't think that's what this is. This might just be a flower field of some sort. Um, but we have cranberry bogs all around where I live and in the fall and the winter they get this mist that covers them in the morning and this made me think of that so I wanted to make it part of this art journal. And I'll do something with this image later. I'm not gonna vignette it or do anything else. I don't need to do that every time I stick an image down, but I know that I like this on this page. This mess from my brush made me think that this blue would go really nice together. And so I just stuck them down on the same page. And 
I'm gonna put essentially that same light blue on here. You have to work pretty quickly, so that's gonna dry. I'm gonna make sure I get birds. You can use a glue stick to stick the tissue papers down too, so if you don't want paint behind something, uh, maybe you've already got something kind of light behind there you can just go ahead and stick it down with a glue stick. So this is already getting nice and moody and fallish, which is making me very excited to work in it again on another day. But I just wanted to show you how when you come in you don't always have to be focused on, I need to make a spread. Sometimes you can just make abstract pages. Sometimes you can just come in and do something like this and you're happy with it and you feel like you painted that day and you're gonna feel better if you can say you painted that day and you weren't putting your art off again like so many of us do. You know, and I love these two pages together. So sometimes making junky pages like this where they're really small so you can see through to the other side is just fun. You get surprises that way and the whole thing's not planned out. But I hope this was helpful for you. There's gonna be more autumn art journaling tutorials and um, more focused pages. So I'll come in, I have one in the works on fall leaves and doing a spread with that. So keep an eye out for that. And if you enjoyed this video, um, subscribe because there's going to be more videos like this. And I do have other art journaling videos on my channel. So happy painting.